<sighs> Fuck. Yes. Okay, so when taking a step back as an audience member to survey the forever changing landscape that is Hollywood entertainment, it's not hard to notice and frankly it's relatively in your face at the moment that Hollywood, well, isn't really doing so hot right now. The seemingly endless plague of errors and hubris that has led to the consistent flop after flop, a formula and a pattern that has seemed to be evolving, mutating, and infesting Hollywood entertainment since the start of 2020. I mean, my last video is literally about the destruction and desecration of an entire studio, one of the biggest in our industry. And with strikes now beginning left and right from writers and actors alike with no endgame in sight, with the only real solution coming from studios as of now is to just wait it out. Eh, fuck it. Maybe people will lose their homes, their cars, their belongings, struggle to provide for their families, their future health, and the passion that they have working for an industry that obviously cares less about them than I do drunk texting my ex after five shots of Casamigos. And while you might be thinking to yourself, what are you talking about, you inconsistent rambling giraffe? What does any of this have to do with the release of Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning? And I will say to you, nothing, but also everything. You see, my dear viewer, with the seventh and newest installment in what might be one of the greatest action franchises of all time, a franchise spanning almost three decades at this point is not only a movie, not a film, but what cinema is and represents itself, an experience. A film that doesn't suffer, but relishes in what I call the Tom Cruise effect, which is pretty much just the movie star effect, which isn't really a luxury that we as audiences and them as studios are privy to anymore. But we'll get to that. The point is, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning is exactly the type of movie that we as fans have been crying out for. A fun, action-packed, exceptionally written, and high-intensity popcorn-eating action flick. A piece of cinema saddled with the extreme expectations not only placed upon themselves to constantly and consistently one-up themselves with every new installment, starring a 60-year-old relic of the past that was once known as the movie star that knows exactly what to give his audience, delayed multiple times due to scheduling problems, but also a film slated the very weekend before what is quite possibly the biggest movie-going experience of the year with Barbieheimer. But when there's a will, there is a way, and trust me, the embodiment of insanity that is Tom Cruise will find the way. So was Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning everything that Tom Cruise made this movie out to be? Is it the movie to start off and quite possibly save the desolate wasteland that has been the summertime movie blockbuster season? The answer, as you know, is already fuck yes. But with that, let's talk plot. The movie follows and continues the story of Ethan Hunt, an ex but also current IMF operative that just so happens to be the most badass man on the planet, with returning men in the seats Luther and Benji as they gear up to take on what might be their most impossible mission to date. Of course, if they so choose to do so. You see, my dear viewer, for those unfamiliar with the Mission Impossible franchise as a whole, and yes, I am talking to you, you young farts. Unlike the recent success in the linear storytelling of the John Wick franchise, events and villains that pop up throughout the series simply because of the cause and effect of our protagonists, the Mission Impossible franchise is more on the same wavelength of our particular 007 franchises, let's call it our Villain of the Week, which in this case is the Entity, an AI system gone sentient, some might even say gone rogue, but the only way to control the system is to retrieve two halves of a key that were shown at the beginning of the movie that just somehow happened to survive the miraculous events of self-destruction of a submarine caused by the entity. Needless to say, a chase for the McMuffin is on Game of Thrones style, but with more action. Lots of it. The players consist of, of course, the CIA, who want the power to control the entity because of, well, you know. Ethan and crew who want to destroy the entity because of, well, you know. New addition to the franchise Grace played by Haley Atwell, an international thief hired to steal the two halves of the key, 
Gabriel, a ghost from Ethan's past acting as sort of a vessel for the entity, either playing the entity or being played himself, a task force led by Tweedledee and Tweedledum tasked to hunt Ethan down, and the White Widow is back, played by Vanessa Kirby, who just wants it, I guess. I don't know. Wrap this all up with insanely choreographed and death-defying action sequences by Tom Cruise, practical effects that practically jump off the screen to a CGI and green screen connoisseur such as myself, an immersive musical score that doesn't seem to miss a beat, tense and suspenseful set pieces that will leave your eyes screaming for water drops by the time it's over, and not to mention the trademark. Man, that form is great. Truly mastered. Point is, wrap it all up and put a bow on it. Tuck it in and kiss it goodnight. Because congratulations, my dear viewer. You just found yourself watching a great piece of cinema. Ah, oh, man. You see, as much as I could gush over the storytelling, character beats, action set pieces, the practical effects, the musical score, world building, and sheer brilliant insanity that is the Mission Impossible franchise, it harpens back to one thing for me personally. Again, what I have deemed the Tom Cruise effect a forgotten art form of what was once known as the movie star, a term or phrase that had pull in studios and audiences alike, a term or phrase that used to hold weight, a meaning. Example, and you can play along with me. Let's play the Tom Cruise effect, a term or phrase that could have also been coined from actors of the yesteryears such as Harrison Ford, George Clooney, or even Sean Connery. Who remembers the guns a roided up action picks that featured the likes of Arnold and Stallone? Or the goats of my generation growing up Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, two actors at the height of their primes vying for roles after role in the early 2000s. To even just as recently with Keanu Reeves, revitalizing his career after the success of the John Wick franchise. Maybe even too much success. <laughs> The Tom Cruise effect simply is a phrase that encompasses the importance of the leading man or woman in your franchise. There is no John Wick without Keanu Reeves. There is no Pirates of the Caribbean without Johnny Depp. There is no Rambo without Stallone. There is no Terminator without Arnold. There is no Indiana Jones without Harrison Ford. And there is no Mission Impossible without Tom Cruise. And while some of these franchises have had the nerve to try to continue on without their respective partnership of the actor involved that has created this Tom Cruise effect within their franchise, I cannot say that many have succeeded. When going to watch Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, Tom Cruise is the appeal. Tom Cruise himself is the reason you're going to watch this movie. And he knows that and is going out of his way to simply give us the audience the most authentic, thrilling, and entertaining movie experiences each and every time. And on that note, Haley Atwell is a brilliant addition to the franchise as Grace. And while yes, being extremely intelligent, quick-witted, charming, relatable, and absolutely stunning, she is still a flawed character who finds herself most of the time in way over her head, thrown into a situation that is way too big for her to handle and seemingly willing to receive the help of her male protagonist when it suits her, while continuing to stay true to her priorities and her character traits that make her a perfect running mate for Ethan throughout the film. Haley Atwell can and should easily become a star in this industry in her own right, and I truly hope that she doesn't receive the Henry Cavill treatment of receiving lesser leading roles because of a couple shitty superhero appearances. Good luck, Haley. We're all rooting for you. Last but not least, we have the villain of the movie, the Entity. And while there are many moving parts in regards to getting their hands on the Entity itself, the film understands the fear that can come with AI and fully utilizes the absolutely mind-bending potential that AI technology could realistically become. And if you've seen the movie at this point, the scene in the alleyway encompasses everything that I'm saying about how sometimes there are truly unbeatable battles in this world. Just kidding. 
This is Tom Cruise. He'll just outrun it or something. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning was a true piece of cinema. A true 10 out of 10 in a year that has been riddled with big old piles of T-Rex style shits to mid-tier films, I guess. We're really taking it back in time dating all the way back to March with John Wick 4 to reach this type of craft, grace, and entertainment. Crazy. Similar movies, similar actors, similar result. Can't be a coincidence. And if you haven't seen this fun, high-octane, action-packed work of art, I can't be any more clear that I highly recommend. It was a fun start to July. Now, we got Barbieheimer. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Of course, as always, comment down below. Engaging with you guys is truly one of the best parts of doing this and it's always interesting and i appreciate hearing all of your perspectives i'll also probably rate the mission impossible movies from good to best and leave that in the comments as well so also do that again as always i want to thank you guys for watching the video make sure to like and subscribe but otherwise that's all the words i got for you today bye